everybody to Bridging Your Week. It is our final installment at the University of South Carolina School of Music. We have made it to the end of the second semester uh, of this year. And boy, it's been a wild ride, but it's been a wonderful ride all the same. And my name is Claire Bryant. Um, I'm the assistant professor of cello here at USC. And I'm thrilled to be joined by the director of opera studies and musical theater, Ellen Schlafer today, and also a new member of uh, U of SC's School of Music faculty who is coming to us in the fall, Michelle Hache, who will be the instructor of musical theater. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Yay. We're so excited to have you join us. I'm going to give you a round of applause up there. Um, well, listen, we're here today to talk about a new, exciting concentration that is going to be uh, starting at U of SC School of Music in the fall. And this is a concentration in the uh, vocal program with musical theater, a musical theater concentration. Ellen, I would love to for you to tell us just a little bit about what this is and how you see it actually uh, integrating into what uh, the fantastic programs we already have here at USC. We are delighted to be welcoming uh, a new concentration, uh, adding to our list of concentrations at the School of Music. Um, this is for those pursuing a Bachelor of Arts in Music, and the concentration allows students coming in to focus a little more on the things that go into making a musical theater performer. So in addition to uh, their voice lessons, um, with Michelle because she'll be teaching them how to sing healthy musical theater, both classical music theater and contemporary. And um, they'll be taking some classes, some uh, beginning classes, or maybe they can go a higher level at, in the dance program, at the dance area, and also in, at the, in the theater department. So uh, working together with our friends across the street. But um, we hope to have our students be able to focus on something that they really, really are interested in. We have a very vigorous and um, uh, entertaining and I think terrific opera program here. And opera and musical theater in my mind are, are two sides of the same coin. We try to teach our students to take the talents they have and tell their stories with music. And uh, the, the works of the 500 years of opera, almost 600 years of opera repertoire now, and the really terrific a canon of musical theater. Um, both have, have every type of story in there. And uh, by adding a musical theater concentration, we can better focus on uh, for our students and also for, for ourselves. I mean, we have terrific voice faculty here. A lot of them have been uh, performed in musicals uh, professionally. But uh, having um, Michelle come join us really allows our students to hone in on what they want to do in, in building their skill set for when they go out in the real world. Because as we know, everything changes really quickly. Yeah, that sounds so exciting. And um, Michelle, can you just give us a little bit of background about where you're coming from, where you're, you're moving to Columbia soon, where are you right now, and what have you been doing in the last uh, few years? And how, how are you excited to bring that experience uh, to this new concentration at USC? Yes, well, I'm uh, first of all, I'm really excited to start working with Ellen uh, on this new concentration. I think that we're going to have a great deal of fun together. Um, it was sort of uh, love at first sight when I first met her. So it's just, this is going to work out, I think, quite wonderfully. Um, so I'm an Austin girl for now, uh, for the past 12 years. Um, I'm originally uh, from the Northwest. I'm from Portland. Uh, and then uh, came down here by way of New York, uh, went to Juilliard, uh, like a um, few of my other colleagues that I know of here at, at U of SC. And um, for the past 12 years, uh, basically because of necessity, I was an opera singer kind of thrown into a music theater uh, market. Uh, we have here in Austin, we have this sort of veritable ocean of musical theater uh, performers uh, from children all the way up to adults that uh, have been very successful. They do very well. We have, you know, Hamilton cast members that come from the city. We have um, we have children that are regularly cast in, in productions. We have a lot of people that go directly to Broadway from here. 
Um, so knowing that we were producing uh, so many contemporary musical theater uh, artists, I was sort of thrown into the mix and uh, and I I had to, you know, learn how to s swim with the fishes uh, pretty much as fast as possible. So um, I went directly into training, learning how uh, to do. I've always been a crossover performer myself. I love to do everything. I've always loved to do everything. I've always loved to do opera and musical theater and, and contemporary stuff too. And I was always told my entire life that I, I had to choose um, until I, you know, took for from Florence Birdwell, who is a teacher that was really wonderful at working with opera singers and making them versatile. Like uh, she taught Kristen Chenoweth, Kelly O'Hara. Um, she taught all of us that we didn't have to choose. And so um, that's kind of the background I came from. So Definitely when I was thrown over, you know, into this pool of people here in Austin, I'd already had some background and, you know, I was I was taught to go with the flow, you know, coming from from that place. That's awesome. I mean, I feel like you're kind of speaking the language of of USC uh, faculty already, because I from what I found in my two years here, everybody is is very supportive and it's it, there doesn't. There, there seems to be this breaking down and dissolving of sort of the classifications of what you do or or what music you p perform or what you study. So this idea that um, you don't have to choose, you don't have to say, well, I'm going to choose to be a Baroque cellist or I'm going to choose to be um, only um, an aria opera singer, if that's if there's even such a thing as that, um, you know, but but it all influences each other. And what we do and the experiences that we have, um, you know, can really lead to a, a, a rich musical life. And Ellen, I would love for you to give us a little bit of background because you were telling us offline or telling me offline. Um, about the fact that that you as a director of opera have been programming musical theater already at USC and I know that you did Carousel most recently um, which I got to, to sub on that show most uh, at, in the most recent Broadway uh, uh, revival and what a fa fantastic show and what amazing operatic sing singing and just tell me a little bit about why you choose to uh, you know include musical theater productions in your programming already. Well, when I I uh, when I first started here, I, I came from a background of, of many 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 years as a professional director and stage manager, and I worked I've directed professionally musicals and operas, and um, I was absolutely unprepared for what I was facing um, mm -hmm. to go from the professional world into um, uh, the academic situation. So Claire, how's that working out for you? I mean, it's, 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 it's a different world. It is a different uh, but I, world. But I, I um, you know, I just, I wanted our students coming in as a freshman, by the time they graduated, to have had the opportunity to either be in or participate in or uh, as an audience member or as a cast member or work backstage, um, a, a, a classical piece, a Mozart piece, a, a Rossini piece, or what they call bel canto, um, a, a more... Uh, standard 19th century rep, 20th and 21st century, and musical theater and operetta, all of these things. So it, it uh, and we've been pretty good about that in, in this, I'm about to finish my 17th year here for a job that was supposed to last two. So, you know, we've done a couple of Sondheims, we've done Sunday in the Park with George, a uh, little night music, uh, carousel. Um, most recently as a whole school, we did Bernstein's Mass, which is a theater piece. But that involved over 220 students within the School of Music, band, orchestra. We had a marching band on stage. We had a we had a bear. We had a dancing bear. We had dancers from the from the theater department. Um, and it's those types of experiences that we hope our students can have. So doing musical theater is is a part of it. Mm -hmm. And I always say, well, you know, people say, well, I'm going to be a classical violinist or something. And I said, and the day will come when you're going to find you need or you want to make a living in a pit. So have the experience of playing in a pit here in college where yeah. you have to learn to, to make your schedule work and, and balance rehearsals and, and health and fun and, and all that kind of stuff. So musicals, well, they've always been a part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up here in Columbia and there was a lively theater program, uh, not program, but but culture. Mm -hmm. um, and you could go to, the, to town theater or, or uh, workshop theater at the time. Trust Us wasn't here yet. And you could see great musicals. Um, and I think, uh, I think this is just part of what 
what music drama is, what the lyric theater is. It's musicals, it's operas, it's operettas. And our students just did a, um, a, a, an outdoor performance of uh, Act Two of Deflated Mouse. Well, that has dialogue in it, and musicals have dialogue. So, you know, anything we can do that, it has dancing in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this instance, we couldn't have touching, so we had air dancing just a little bit. But, but I mean, all of these things, they, they're not, you can't say, I'm in the musical theater camp or I'm in the opera camp. Right. We can go to opera camp for the kids, but that's, camps are another thing that Michelle and I are going to continue to, to, to talk about. But I just, I, I feel like this is just vital for any student that, or person that wants to have a, 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 a taste of the, the music theater, the lyric theater is what they call it. So. Yeah. It's great. It's fantastic. I mean, it just, it seems like, you know, this was just an, an inevitable step to now create um, this new concentration and to now have a faculty member that is dedicated to that concentration. And um, Michelle, can you just tell us just a little bit about, I know that this program has not even started. You all haven't even gotten to, to plan and make the plans yet. Um, I know that that's forthcoming in the coming months, uh, but, but what might, it, say I was going to come to USC and I was going to get a Bachelor of Arts and I wanted to have a musical theater uh, concentration and um, hopefully I would be, you know, it sounds like Ellen, I would maybe get a chance to be in uh, a production or so, but what else with this concentration might I be doing during the semester? Sure. Um, well, I, I'm going to kind of riff off a little bit what, what Ellen just said uh, leading into that. Um, what she's describing is uh, a wonderfully well-rounded program. Um, and, and you know what? They are two sides of the same coin because really when it all comes down to it, uh, the folks that are out there getting hired in music theater, they have classical training. They have a solid foundation. They're looking for uh, real musicians, people mm -hmm. that were trained to have solid musicianship, uh, folks that are versatile, but but folks that have a solid foundation. And um, and so basically what we're going to be doing is adding uh, a few more uh, details to uh, a well-rounded, you know, idea of, of the a well-rounded program because, you know, there's a really very healthy ecosystem going on at U of SC. Um, like you've said, there's incredible faculty members. Um, truly impressive faculty. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to be adding is a music theater workshop. So each semester, um, this emphasis is going to have an opportunity to learn uh, some of the logistics involved uh, in the, the musical theater industry. They're going to learn uh, all of those little details. Basically, it's granular information that's going to be delivered semester by semester. So there's going to be sort of a rotating um, program that what we're, we're going to make sure that we cover uh, the various time periods of musical theater history. We're going to make sure that we start from the very beginning uh, all the way on up to uh, to contemporary music theater, you know, the stuff that's coming out right now and even stuff that's about to come out because um, uh, the, the internet is a place that doesn't like to keep a lot of things secret. <laughs> so <laughs> like at all in any aspect of, of what goes on there. So we can usually gauge, you know, what's the trends, you know, what's about to come out. And uh, musical theater is fast and furious with its trends. So um, musical theater history is, is uh, ever changing. Uh, like it is for everything else, but it's it's something that we certainly have to keep up with. So, so like for example, just to kind of give an example of the way that this might go for the music theater workshop, we're gonna um, cover one semester auditioning techniques, another semester uh, a, a sort of mini course within the workshop, the singing actor, um, the audition monologue, um, marketing and branding, uh, directing scenes. I like to I. I like to uh, make it known to the students that, you know, it's, it's important to be well-rounded when it comes to, you want, you know, you want people to stay in the game and you want people to be marketable. So it's important to, you know, uh, gain some knowledge when it comes to, uh, you know, whether it's conducting or directing or choreography, you know, things like that are important. And also genre switching, because um, if we're going to speak directly to uh, the vocal training that goes into 
um, the musical theater voice, uh, what this really all comes down to is uh, the performer, the artist has to have a solid understanding of what the various genres not only sound like, but how to apply that directly to their instrument. Why is pop different than, um, you know, like a, a different sort of contemporary musical theater? Um, what is that signature sound, you know, that what, what makes it rock? what makes it pop and uh what kind of you know what is a riff you know and and how is that different than perhaps say an ornament and and how has the ornament involved into a riff? all of these i'm a big nerd so i love talking about these things so uh, i'm probably tangential here but all of those things play into genres genre switching and i've definitely noticed uh training musical theater singers over the past you know 12 years or so, um, that's something that I'd say people struggle with more than anything else, um, that quite a bit of focus needs to be put on. So we'll discuss that. And then of course, um, I, we're going to have, um, some cabaret performances and musical reviews that happen at the end of each semester where, uh, we're going to make sure and cover all of the various time periods and genres of musical theater so that everybody can get their feet wet um, doing all of the things, not just one style, but, you know, just, uh, playing around with all of the various styles along with all of that music theater history and, um, perhaps some, uh, some freshmen and senior projects will get thrown in there too. So, yeah. That's awesome. It sounds to me like the word of the day for all of this is versatility and how that can really lead uh, and spur our future for the real world and maybe creating new things and dissolving, um, you know, old expectations or old boundaries um, and bridging those distances um, so that it's not just this or that or only here, but that, you know, a, a student who comes to USC will get a lot of different experiences and can choose to concentrate in musical theater now. And, and Ellen, I know you mentioned that we have some other concentrations like entrepreneurship, community engagement, music industry. So this is our web page has, it has all the information. So <laughs> yes, go to our web page to find out more. But I'm just really uh, grateful that you all took the time to um, announce uh, the you know the launch of this new uh, concentration. Anything else you want to say, Ellen? Yeah, I, I would. I mean, you know, the um, I would just like people to know that that our auditions for uh, our our productions. I don't know what's going to happen uh, going forward with Michelle, but the opera auditions are open to everybody, and you don't have to be a trained opera singer to cool. to, to be part of it. And you know what we're going to to do in addition to training people on stage, we're going to by necessity let uh, cultivate people's interest in what goes on backstage and how to, you know, all the sub, the, uh, the other collaborative artists that we need. So I'm looking forward to, to also having that aspect that, short up with what we're doing too. That's awesome. And that's so important to point out because I think um, at least being a, an instrumentalist who's worked in, uh, you know, at on operas, musical theater, you know, backup bands, um, it's nice when there is um, a relationship between the stage artist and the musicians, the musician, stage artist, and the crew, the makeup, you know, all of the things that happen to put on an opera or musical theater production, you know, down to, you know, the stage managers, uh, the, the wardrobe. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And I think that a lot of people forget that. And I think um, that's, that's awesome that you're, uh, you know, making it equitable and accessible to, to all people to have a chance to experience some of those roles, um, whether or not they're in, in your program or not. So that's pretty cool. I, mean, I think, I, I, I hope I'm speaking for Michelle too, but the, one of the reasons that, that, that we do what we do, which is being more than, you know, I, I'm, I'm a stage director. I'm not, I'm proud to say that I'm one of the non-musicians hired by the School of Music. Um, but, but I got into this and into opera uh, because that's where the breaks were. You, you find your connections because that's what it ultimately is about. But I got into it and stayed in it because it was great collaboration. Mm -hmm. And whether it's opera, musical theater, these, these lyric theater pieces require an enormous amount of cooperation and collaboration. And that's what we have at our School of Music as well and in a larger sense, but but in what we're trying to do is, you know, 
It's a big part of it. It's we have to collaborate to make the show happen. Here, 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 here. That's great. Well, that's a great way to maybe uh, end our segment. And um, thank you both uh, for being here today. And we look forward to spurring our future into the next year at USC and and hearing some wonderful opera and musical theater uh, performances. So thank you so much. Go Gamecocks. Hi there, my name is Dominic Armstrong. I'm an instructor of voice here at the University of South Carolina, have been for one year. Uh, I'm a tenor, and uh, next year I will be teaching a lot of students, and I will also be teaching the opera survey course here at the university. Hello, my name is Rachel Calloway. I'm instructor of voice here at the University of South Carolina. I teach introduction to singer's diction, and I'm also the director of SPARC, Carolina's Music Leadership Laboratory. SPARC serves to um, complement and add to our students and faculty and staff experiences here at the school by working on project development, granting, technology, mental and physical wellness, and just creating all around uh, musicians of the world. We're really excited to be, you know, here at U of SC with what I think is, frankly, a really extraordinary uh, group of voice teachers. Um, we are all really, really versatile in that everyone in our area feels very passionately that students need both the exposure and the opportunity to learn and work on and, and um, explore different kinds of music. For myself, um, in my like pre-Carolina career, um, I really was very focused and still very focused on contemporary and modern music. Um, one thing that I love about that is that the more contemporary the music, much as is the case for very, very, very old music, the less sort of um, categorized or siloed it is. So in thinking about bringing Michelle Hache uh, onto our faculty with a real expertise in musical theater styles, I feel like it's just the missing piece of our puzzle, right? It's like the, the final cherry on our Sunday. Um, to really add this other element of expertise, I have certainly been involved in many musical theater productions um, and encourage my students to sing um, theatrical repertoire, but now we'll have someone available to not just the students, but even the faculty as this extraordinary resource um, in this other style. Yeah, you know, having listened to a lot of uh, the recitals, uh, now we're doing them online quite a bit, obviously, for COVID reasons. Uh, it's been so interesting to see our current students uh, and when you get to the end, a lot of them will say, and now I'm going to do this musical theater number. And I think Rachel and I can both tell you that they get to the musical theater number and you go, I wish that they had used all of these things in their classical singing. I would say vice versa. Uh, I think that the broader that the palette can be, uh, the better off we as artists are, and not only artists, but as people. It's a liberal arts education that we're all after. And that includes voice. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, Rachel and I both shared a program in New York once called Composers of the Voice, uh, and one of the composers there composed with microtones. Uh, now, I know Rachel and her ear, and she can find those. I know, I can't. But what I can tell you is that to me, what I always pictured when I was singing those pieces was a color. Because the other people that can't really tell are the audience. The audience doesn't know if you're singing a G double flat, they don't know what exactly you're singing, but they do know if you come with intention and that you come with a color. Uh, and that's what we're trying to add to our already vibrant colors here is just another vehicle for how to interpret and communicate the vocal instrument to an audience, which as they tell you many times while you're training is the original instrument. So <laughs> the OG. <laughs> that's correct. So it's just another way of doing things. Um, you know, I, I was lucky enough to do a lot of different kinds of music as throughout my career and continue to. Uh, one of the things I, I found most interesting was when I did uh, a lot of early music, particularly uh, Monteverdi's uh, The Return of Ulysses, Il Ritorno d'Ulysse in Patria. Uh, in this piece, I really discovered how much early music is related to what people are doing now in modern music. Uh, musical theater and and all sorts of things. But it's, it's a, again, it's about a vehicle for communication. It's about a vehicle of how to spread a message from your body to someone else's body. 
Uh, and we're just trying to add to that as we move forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's this funny tie-in, um, as Dominic was saying, between you know old music and new music. And especially when we think about a lot of contemporary musical theater styles, they're um, often very pop-influenced, right? Um, and with that, what we see on the page is just sort of, um, how would you say it, a blueprint, right? For when, then what someone is gonna, gonna perform, how they're gonna perform. And we're used to hearing singers now add riffs, melismas, you know, colorations, um, and all kinds of things, right? In the same way, actually, that if we jump back a couple hundred years more to the bel canto era, same idea. Really sort of straightforward, simple sounding tune, simple sounding accompaniment and then the individual artist has the opportunity to lay his or her expertise or excitement or flash on top if you will but there is this um this sort of aspect of um, invention and creativity that we see in contemporary musical theater um, and other kinds of music and i'm really excited to um, bring that liberation to my studio and our students here so they can find their own voice in whatever music they're singing Right? And so having Michelle and um, this concentration uh, as part of our school, is it's going to be an opportunity for all of us to sort of maybe liberate ourselves from what we may have felt as like the shackles of history, you know, like how can I, how could I ever sing this piece better than Janet Baker sang it? Like I'm not going to, right? So instead of feeling that burden of the past to kind of be able to take everything we have um, from our greater experience and then free ourselves from that to reinvent it with our own voices and, and for us as faculty to learn from our students how they are able to do that. I, I feel like it's just a really exciting moment in our um, vocal growth in this program. Yeah, I, I like your comment, breaking the shackles of history. Now, <laughs> I might say that uh, we honor history Very by well. moving it forward, uh, but I do like the, the phrase as well. It's okay. a good, good uh, combination of words. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, as we instruct our students on what the traditions are and have been, we do that. Okay, so I'll go into the story that was in my head. When I was a child, I used to do a lot of study on George Gershwin. George Gershwin started out as a Tin Pan Alley pianist. He had to take a lot of time to learn his voice. He only did that through mimicking others. And that's what we do. We show people tradition so that we can then take that tradition and make it our own to then create tradition for the future generations. And that's what we and Michelle got to do while we were training at the Juilliard School with in fact the same instructor, all three of us ourselves. So what you are say seeing is three different interpretations of the same voice who came from so many great voices before her and how lucky is U of SC to have something like that to offer to this community and to the community around the stereo. So it should be great.